Hello, and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I am available for contracting, on-site training, and code reviews. Now, welcome to the fifth episode in my series on using the tools available to learn modern C++. This will probably be the last episode in this series, and I want to wrap up by just covering some of the more interesting things that it is possible for the compiler to do for us with Clang Tidy specifically is what I'm going to be focusing on today. And just in general, try to convince you finally, if you haven't been already convinced, that using your tools to help you learn the evolving language is a good thing to do. So I'm going to give a couple of examples of some loops and some code and maybe some pointer passing, something like this, and just show you all the transformations that we can get across in one example of code here. Now, if you're used to programming in C++ previously, you probably have written many loops like this, or worse, perhaps the loops that you have written that use um, the std colon colon vector colon colon iterator syntax and you end up with quite the mess of loops that are kind of complicated and fortunately we have this feature now in cling modernize it's been there for a long time actually where we can run a modernization such as this and it is entirely possible for the compiler tools uh, with Clang Tidy to automatically convert this into a ranged for loop to something like this. And this can be applied with great success to a large code base. I've seen this kind of thing been able to be applied and have very few problems with the actual application. And similar to this, if you have perhaps been using C++ and C for a long time, you've probably seen code that looks like this. For example, null or setting 0 to a pointer value. And Clang Modernize is able to do something with this also. In C11, we have null pointer, which is much more specific to saying that we're actually working with a pointer instead of a zero value. Null was typically defined as being zero. Even for all the things that it can do, none of the tools that we have available can recognize that really here, for a system like this, we should have just used an algorithm. And really, this is the kind of thing that we should have gone with, is just using standard accumulate over the range begin to end of the vector and summing all the values together. Now, one thing worth pointing out here is, and this is why we really want to take the most advantage of all the tools that we have available, is we are summing a range of integers into an integer. But if we had instead had a range of floats and we're summing it into this integer right here, this actually sets the return type from standard accumulate. If we build with Visual Studio in this case, we can see here that we've got a conversion from float to int and possible loss of data. So this is something where Visual Studio can warn us in a better way than any of the other tools and compilers that we have available. So be sure as you are learning the modern C++ techniques to use all the tools that you have at your disposal. Visual Studio does give us a great way to integrate all these tools in one place, but Cling Tidy is available on every platform and CBP Check is available on every platform. Make sure that you familiarize yourself with the list of algorithms. They are, in fact, growing with every release of C++. And be sure to use these algorithms where you can to make your code cleaner and more expressive. And as I mentioned kind of in passing in the last episode, try to avoid using heap variables and try to stick with your stuff on the stack and keeping everything simple. Don't go for the over-engineered version that has a lot of inheritance all over the place. And that is unfortunately something that we don't get a ton of feedback from our tools. They don't have a way of doing a complete program analysis and saying, hey, by the way, you're using inheritance here with virtual functions when there was really no need to.
So thank you for uh, following along on this five-part series in getting up to speed with Modern C++. I hope you find the tools and these videos useful. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.